So in this video we are going to discuss one of the most important piece, in my opinion, I'm a medical student, so in my opinion this is one of the most important results of probability, something that all doctors need to understand, uh, and it's the problem with screening, uh, the risks of screening. So um, screening, just for those who don't know, uh, is basically uh, where you test the general public for a disease. Uh, so for instance, uh, the current examples of things like breast cancer screening, every, um, or smear tests, where where you're uh, um, testing for cervical cancer, uh, which are both tests that women have uh, to test for breast and cervical cancer respectively. Uh, so you, uh, in principle, what you do is you take the entire population, you test them uh, for uh, breast cancer or cervical cancer, and the idea is that we will detect it earlier by doing that, and that our uh, treatment will have a better chance of being successful if we catch the cancer early, um, and we don't wait for symptoms to arise and the patient to present to their GP. Instead, we catch it when it's not when it's asymptomatic, and um, hopefully the um, the uh, carcinoma uh, is smaller, uh, so you have a better chance of uh, successfully destroying it with chemotherapy or surgical intervention or radiotherapy. Uh, so cancer is one of the main things we screen for. Um, so, but what is the risk of doing that? And the risk of doing that is um, what we're going to discuss in this video, and I'm going to show you how basically the actual probability uh, that um, the actual probability that if you, well, say you get a positive result uh, in the test, um, the actual probability that you have the disease is probably very, very low, and that's what I want to show you in this video. If the disease is rare, then the pro even if the test is very, very accurate, uh, the probability that you ha actually have the disease is very low, and that's what I'm going to show you in this video. And we are going to use the concept of conditional probability and uh, the concept of um, the concept of the law of total probability discussed in previous videos. Um, okay, um, so, uh, right then, so let's set do the setup for this question then. So we have a test, a test, um, just for an example, to make the example concrete, let's say it's for breast cancer for breast cancer, for breast cancer, and we test every, uh, well we don't test men obviously, uh, we test women, uh, and let's say the incidence of the disease, which means the actual percentage of the population that has the disease is uh, 1%, so 1% of women, 1% uh, of uh, women have breast cancer, have breast cancer. Okay, in fact, let's make it smaller, 0.1%, let's say 0.1% of the, uh, I don't know what the actual percentage of people who have, I think it's actually much, much, uh, well, no, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting confused, I, I think the, the probability that you will get breast cancer is much higher than that, I don't know what the prob the actual incidence of breast cancer in the population is, but let's say it's one in a thousand. Um, just um, for argument's sake, and for some diseases it will be much, much lower than this. Uh, for instance, why, the reason we don't screen for ankylosing spondylitis is that this number would be absolutely tiny, and the probability that if you get a positive result, uh, you actually have the disease would be negligible, so it would be a pointless screening for that. Uh, so, tests for breast cancer. So 0.1% of, uh, of women have breast cancer. Okay, and we have this brilliant test. Uh, which is 99% accurate. Uh, now, what does that mean? That means... That means that if you have the disease, if you have the disease, the disease, um, the probability that you will get a positive result on the test, probability that you will get a positive result a positive result on the test on the test is 0 0.99 so 99% and similarly if you don't have the disease the disease the probability that you'll get a negative result that you will test negative negative 
is 0 0.99. So the test gets you right 99% of the time. So let's draw our sample space. So we want to draw our probability space. So what are the outcomes that I could have? So if I have a patient that comes in and I'm going to screen them, what are the possible outcomes? Well, firstly, they could have the disease. So they could actually have the disease, disease positive, and the test could be positive. So they, ha they come in with the disease and the test tells them they have the disease. So good. Or they could have the disease and the test could tell them that they don't have the disease. Or they could not have the disease and the test tells them they have the disease. Or they could not have the disease and the test tells them that they don't have the disease. Those are the four outcomes within our sample space. So this is our sample space. Right, so we know some uh, probabilities on here. We know firstly that the probability that you have the disease, the event that you have the disease, that you are disease positive, is equal to 0 0.001. So basically, if I draw the event that you have the disease, it's these two uh, outcomes here. If you, this is the outcome or this is the outcome, you have the disease. So the probability function attaches to that set 0 0.001. OK. Um, and the thing that I... Uh, other things I know. Well, well, we'll firstly just go over the things I know, and then we'll ask what I actually want to know. Oh, well, actually, we'll ask what I actually want to know now. I want to know the probability that, given that I have a positive test, that I get uh, that I actually have the disease. The probability that if I get a positive test, that I am actually diseased, which is the conditional probability that uh, that you are diseased. If, that you are disease positive if you ha get a positive test. That's what I want to know. That's what the patient wants to know. They get a positive result. They want to know what is the probability that I actually have the disease. So this is the probability that I have the disease, probability that I have breast cancer, that the patient has breast cancer rather than I have breast cancer. Patient has breast cancer. Cancer, given that they get a positive test, given that they test positive, given that they test positive. So you can see why conditional probability is going to come in so important here. I want to try and steer clear. Uh, so this is just notation. That's exactly what I've written there is exactly what that means because I hope that this is going to be watched by medical students who potentially don't know much statistics. I want it to hope I want this argument to hopefully be understandable to even if you don't have much statistics. But as I say if you watch the previous videos you should be able to understand this. Okay. So, um the event that you test positive is this event here, and I should do some different colours. So the event that you test positive is this event here. So basically, what I want to know, I'm saying I am in this event. I want to now know what is the probability that I am in this subset of it, this bit here. I want to know what is the probability that I'm in that. So the probability of that, given that I'm in that. I do not just want to know the probability that I'm in that, given that I'm in that entire sample space. So this is why conditional probability is very important, because we're restricting our attention just to this event now. OK. So what do we need to be able to do to work this out? Well, we know that the probability of this is equal to the probability of this intersection. So it's the probability that this event happens. The probability that you are uh, diseased, uh, that you have the disease, that you are disease positive. I shouldn't be saying that you are diseased. That you are disease positive intersection, the probability that you test positive. So that's the probability that if we are, um, that you are, this, uh, the, you are, um, you are disease positive and test positive, um, divided by the probability that you test positive. So the, I want the probability of this set divided by the probability of this set, which is the conditional probability that given you're in here, uh, that uh, what's the probability that you're in this specific subset of it. OK, um, so move the paper up a bit. Oh, we need more paper. I've got a back. No, no, right. OK, put that there. Um, so I want, don't want to lose this picture because that's everything. Um, so, um, mm -hmm -hmm. how am I going to do this? Um, just fold that over. Uh, oh, how am I going to do this? Um, so we'll try and do it like that. OK, uh, so where should we go next? 
So the probability, let's write down more of the stuff we know. We know this stuff about the test being accurate. So what does that mean? We know that the probability that given that you have the disease, the probability that given that you have the disease, that you get a positive test, so the probability of getting a positive test, given that your disease uh, that you are disease positive, is zero point um, nine nine, and we also know that the probability of getting a negative test result, given that you are disease that you are um, that you don't have the disease, is equal to zero point nine nine. And what we want to be able to work out is we firstly need the things in here. So we want the probability that you are. Um, that you have the disease and that you test positive. How are we going to work that out? Well, that is the probability of this um, event here. We know the probability that you are um, that you have the disease here. Uh, so how are we going to work that out 